Magandang hapon po! Welcome sa Faith Factor, sharing of ideas and conversations ignited by the Faith Factor. Makakasama po natin ngayong hapon ang Chair of the CEAP Commission on the Philippine Catholic School Standards, Superintendent of the Diocesan Schools, Diocese of Imus, at Parish Priest ng Parish of Holy Family, Lancaster, New City. Para po sa inyong mga katanungan o reaksyon, maaari po ninyo itong ipadala sa comment section. Narito po ang ating speaker ngayong buwan ng June para sa topic na The Church and Catholic Schools, The Philippine Catholic School Standards. Please welcome Father Alain Manalo. Magandang araw po muli sa inyong lahat and I'm very pleased to accompany you and to journey with you in our reflection on the apostolate of Catholic education in our church. This is already the fourth episode of this Faith Factor on the Church and Catholic Schools. We have taken up in the first three episodes our vision on Catholic education, beginning with the Holy See's teachings on Catholic schools and the eight defining characteristics of excellent Catholic schools in the Philippines. Last week, we also focus on the vision of the Church, especially of Pope Francis, not just on Catholic education, but education in general, with his global compact on education launched in 2019. For today, we'll be talking about the Philippine Catholic School Standards. Well, as I have said already in the past, we have published in 2016 this Philippine Catholic School Standards for Basic Education. And um, last year, we already launched this Philippine Catholic School Standards for Higher Education. While um, they share a lot of things um, in common, um, surely they have differences on the benchmarks and standards, and I will explain what are those later on. But our um, discussion for this afternoon will be based um, primarily on the PCSS for basic education. This is a very good introduction on the Philippine Catholic School Standards and um, for schools who are contemplating to embrace and implement the PCSS in their schools, well this session will serve as an orientation session for you on what the Philippine Catholic School Standards is all about. Well, the context of this project is the 400th year, 400th year of Catholic education, which we celebrated um, in 2012. And um, then it was that time that the project was conceptualized and CEAP thought of targeting 2016 to be the year of launching of the Philippine Catholic School Standards because 2016 was the 75th year of um, CAP as an organization and we're blessed that we're able to accomplish our target because in 2016 we launched the PCSS for basic education. A very important concept also or context of this project is our celebration of the 500th year of Christianity in 2021 and we're also blessed because um, despite the pandemic our very hard-working technical working group for PCSS in higher education um, met regularly. And so, in time for the 500th year of Christianity, last year, we're able to launch our Philippine Catholic School Standards for Higher Education. Well, the, the relevance of this project um, is the reality of our society today. You know? needless, to say, needless to say, we are confronted with lots of difficulties and challenges, poverty, injustice, graft and corruption, migration, environmental issues, family breakdown, deterioration of values, name it. The list is practically endless. And it's always a question of um, what role does a Catholic school or what role do Catholic schools um, assume in all these situations? Hindi naman pwedeng walang pakialam o hindi naapektuhan ng ating mga katolikong paaralan 
ng ganito mga problema na matagal nang naranasan ng ating sambayanan. And um, the issues are not just external to Catholic schools. Catholic schools also embrace and confront problems inside the institutions. I mean, the question of identity and mission. I have said, say some, in the first episode, I remember, most of us um, work and serve and manage Catholic schools without clarity of our identity as Catholic educational institutions and also of our mission. The issue of governance and leadership, excellence, many things being compromised. Well, the lingering issue also of affordability and accessibility. Kahit hindi nyo sabihin, kahit ako, no, it's always been a challenge. How can we make our schools open and affordable for everyone? And con connected to this is the issue of sustainability. Well, we want to open our schools to everybody, but how can we sustain our schools so that they won't close? And um, the issue of declining enrollment. So I think there's a lot also of issues that are internal to our Catholic educational institutions and to these issues outside and inside our Catholic schools, for this, we came up with this Philippine Catholic School Standards for Basic Education. Well, I don't say that um, this will be the solution. And in fact, this will not be an immediate solution so that our schools can address all these problems. But um, as you will hopefully realize later on, the PCSS will give you the roadmap or the direction on how to address all these concerns inside and outside our schools so that we can truly become agents of um, transformation and um, participating in the evangelizing mission of our Holy Mother, the Church. Well, PCSS is a collaborative authorship. No? There's not just one person who wrote this. We organize, CEAP organize a technical working group composed of um, different Filipino educators coming from religious or congregational schools, diocesan schools, mission schools, practically all the regions of the Philippines were represented and um, some come from big schools, some come from small schools or struggling schools. And I was blessed to be part of the technical working group for the basic education. A separate technical working group was organized for higher education. But um, our group, the technical working group, was um, being accompanied and uh, mentored by Loyola Chicago Center for Catholic School Effectiveness. So this is the Loyola University in Chicago. They have a center for Catholic school effectiveness. Well, the process that we observed in drafting this PCSS is very simple. Um, of course, we studied, the first thing we studied and discussed and reflected on the church's teachings on Catholic education. Um, that is our first session. No? Um, from Vatican II, the announcements or the, the exhortations and speeches of the Pope, teachings from the Catholic congregation of a Catholic education, and even our local um, prescriptions coming from the CBCP and the Second Plenary Council of the Philippines. Then after discussing, we drafted um, the different parts of the document, and um, the documents, were, our drafts were submitted to as many experts or experienced educators, Catholic educators in the entire Philippines, as many as possible. And we welcome their comments and then revise again the draft based on their comments and the process continues. So practically from 2013 to 2016, that's like um, three years working on the document on basic education. So is it just a work of um, one person, for sure? And is it even just a work of a group, which we call the technical working group? No? Because we have consulted as many educators as possible during the regional assemblies of Catholic educators in CEAP. We present what we have finished, and we, are, we asked our 
educators on their feedback or comments on the document. And so practically, we believe and we claim the PCSS represent really the collective sentiment, say appreciation or position of Catholic educators in the Philippines on what a Catholic school should be in our time, no? in our day. Now, this is a unique document because, um, as my, I've mentioned already, this is based on the Church's documents and the teachings on Catholic education. So for one thing, um, the PCSS is uh, very faithful to the Church's teachings on Catholic education. And this is not an accreditation instrument because um, while I had the uh, commission on the Philippine Catholic School Standards, our mandate is not to visit schools and check them if they are complying on the PCSS. And when we find them to be compliant, we'll say, oh, this is a um, PCSS compliant school or this is a PCSS um, accredited school. No, there's no such thing in the mind of the PCSS project. What we really wanted to, to, to develop is an instrument that will help our schools in their self-assessment. And what is this self-assessment for? For the school's self-improvement. So the tool will help schools to examine and evaluate how are they doing in terms of Catholic identity and mission. And from there, based from their honest to goodness self-evaluation, um, they will come up with points to improve themselves through policies, um, projects, activities, and programs. So this PCSS is meant for the collective reflection and discernment on where the school need to be as it lives out its mission and identity. Now the framework of the PCSS goes like this. So we began with church documents. And from the church's documents, we have drawn the eight defining characteristics, which we have taken up during the second episode. No? So I keep on talking about first, second, third episode, because for those who really wanted to appreciate Catholic education in the Philippines today, um, you can go back to those past episodes and watch them. Um, they are available at YouTube and at Facebook of TV Maria. Then from the eight defining characteristics, we drafted the standards. And for basic education, there were 15 standards according to five domains. And from the standards, 62 benchmarks were drawn. And from there, we drafted the rubrics of the 62 benchmarks. No? So I hope you won't get lost with the terms that I'm using. No? But um, for, base, for higher education, they have more standards. Like in basic education, we have only 15. In higher education, there are 24. I'm not sure. I think they have over 100. I'm not really sure how many benchmarks have they drafted for themselves. Because in higher education, they don't just have five domains, but six domains. So... The eight defining characteristics as a review, these are the essential attributes or qualities of a Catholic school. These essential characteristics make a Catholic school Catholic. And they are the foundation of our standards and benchmarks that will evaluate the school's policies, programs, and services. Now, what are those eight defining characteristics of excellent Catholic schools in the Philippines? First, centered in the person and message of Jesus Christ. Second, participating in the evangelizing mission of the church. Third, animated by the spirit of communion. Fourth, established as an ecclesial institution. Fifth, distinguished by a culture of excellence. Sixth, committed to integral formation. Seventh, engaged in the service of the church and society with preferential option for the poor. Then eight, they engage in dialogue of faith and life and culture. So these are the eight defining characteristics of excellent Catholic schools in the Philippines. And we all, Catholic schools in the Philippines, must strive so that we shall achieve this um, defining characteristics 
for ourselves. For a deeper reflection on the eight defining characteristics, then you can watch again our second episode on the faith factor for this month of June 2022. Now, moving forward from the eight defining characteristics, as I have said, we have drawn the 15 standards and the 62 benchmarks, and they were categorized into five domains. So what are the domains? The domains are the essential facets or areas of school operations. So it's just like part of the house. No? There is a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, a comfort room, bedroom, terrace. So we categorize the various uh, aspects of our school operations into five domains. Um, just for the purpose of helping us um, grasp our educational services and operations more easily. Now, what are standards? Standards are expectations of excellence and effectiveness that describe where the Catholic school should be headed. So this is an ideal or ultimate outcome that our schools should aspire to become. So ito yung pangarap natin. No? So standards are practically um, um, say like a North Star that will help us where shall we go um, in this particular domain. So these are ideals that we want to achieve for our schools. But ideals are ideals and many times they're abstract. We cannot actually say embrace them, capture them, or even measure them. And it's very important that we're able to measure our ideals so that um, we can evaluate ourselves on how we are doing in a particular ideal. That's why we have benchmarks. Benchmarks describe what must be done to achieve the standards. And these are observable and measurable descriptors of the standards. Kasi, um, kahit naman sa ating regular na buhay, no, meron tayong mga pangarap. Halimbawa, pangarap natin sa mga dalaga, makapag-asawa ng isang responsabling lalaki. So that's your standard, a responsible man. But how will you know that a man is responsible? So there must be benchmarks. So benchmarks concretize or um, make concrete, um, make measurable. Um, it's for easier for us to grasp this ideal that we want for ourselves. So for the example that your ideal is a responsible man, yan ang papakasalan mo. So ang benchmark mo ay may trabaho, may pinag-aralan, walang bisyo, um, marunong sa gawaing bahay, at marami pang iba. No? But of course, benchmarks vary based on your standards. No? Example lang yan. So, from the five domains, 15 standards, and the 62 benchmarks, we have now these rubrics. No? And I will explain later what are those rubrics. So, the domains. What are the five domains of Catholic schools in the Philippines? And um, every educator, especially the leaders of Catholic schools, should pay attention to these five domains. The first one, very important, because it's the overarching domain, it covers all the other four domains, our Catholic identity and mission. Second, leadership and governance. It speaks about the board of trustees, the administrators, our middle managers in the school, and how do they empower the employees and how do they run the school. The third is um, learner development. This pertains to the academic program of our educational institutions, curriculum, instruction, and assessment. The fourth is the learning environment. This is just about facilities, our surroundings, but this also speak about our culture, our tradition, our practices that, in a way, um, support our academic programs for the holistic formation of our students and also for the attainment of our vision and mission. And the last one is operational vitality. So it speaks about finances, enrollment strategies, 
marketing, communication, strategic planning, our human resources, our physical plant, our networking and linkages, um, all aimed at the sustainability of our educational institutions. So I hope now you realize that it's not really easy to run a Catholic school. And I think these domains are also the same, which perhaps they were labeled differently in other educational institutions. So ang school, hindi lang academics, yung learner development. No? So very important. It's very clear for us what is our vision, our mission, our philosophy, goals and objectives, and even core values. And those are covered by the domain of Catholic identity and mission. Now, very importantly, our leaders in the school, because they set the direction, they shape the culture, they are very influential in the entire school activities, no? in all the programs and activities. So this is taken up by the domain, leadership and governance. Academics, ayan, nakafocus tayo, learner development. But academics would not be enough. We have to pay attention to the culture of our school, to the environment of our educational institutions. And they, you may be surprised, the environment and the culture of our school may be more formative or more influential to our students no, than what are those taking place inside the classroom. Many times we forget, you, 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 re, you, you recall an experience of an alumni homecoming, we forget what our teachers taught using chalk and blackboard or using the PowerPoint and LED screens, no? Do you still remember the chemical formulas, mathematical formulas, um, rules in the construction of sentences? You don't talk about that anymore. And you may even find it um, irrelevant or not useful once you've gone to college or once you've gone to work. But when we go for alumni homecoming, we remember how were we treated? How were we appreciated? How was it in the canteen, in the toilet? Um, how, how, how do we relate with one another? Our activities, our programs. And these, are, these make up a lot of our memories because practically, when you have a school photo album, I mean, even your personal photo album, I don't know who's skipping pictures of lectures or activities inside classrooms and laboratories. But we have lots of activities or lots of pictures and connected with this, lots of memories with our camping, our sports fest, Linggo ng Wika, debate, etc. And those are about the learning environment. And what would all this be of use to us if our schools will not be sustainable? Maganda nga programa mo, maganda nga ang kultura mo, wala naman kayong pera, o kaya ang sudyante nyo hindi naman dumadami, o kaya napapabayaan naman ng mga physical facilities. Ah, mamaya nadidemanda pa ang school kasi hindi maayos ang ating mga HR policies. That's why operational vitality is as important as the rest. Yan ang ating tinututukan when we run Catholic schools or when we run other schools. Sa higher education, they also have the same five domains but they added another one kasi sa higher education they have a responsibility not just in the church but also in society that they should pay special attention to so kala natin ang higher education parang basic education lang makapagproduce ng diploma ang mga estudyante merong diploma ng college degree makapasa sa board hindi lang po iyon our catholic higher education also pay attention to and that is the sixth domain in PCSS for higher education, research and community engagement. Ito wala to sa basic ed, pero nasa higher ed. Our educational institutions, our higher educational institutions should be paying attention to research. Dapat nagko-contribute sila sa body of knowledge that we already have at sa community engagement. No? Now, I'll give you an example of um, a standard and a benchmark in learner development. So, standard eight in learner development says, an excellent Catholic school ensures 
the integral formation of the human person through a relevant, robust, and rigorous curriculum inspired by gospel values. So that's the ideal, that our curriculum should bring about integral formation, and um, this curriculum should be inspired by gospel values. So how will you able to measure your degree of attainment of this standard? As I have said, the standards are more ideal and abstract. What is more concrete and what can really be measured is the benchmark. So this standard, Standard 8, had, has several benchmarks. And Benchmark 8.2 says, the aims of the curriculum clearly articulate the development of the physical, spiritual, intellectual, psychosocial, cultural, and creative dimension of learners. So you see, our benchmark now is more concrete because it speaks about the aims of the curriculum and the aims of the curriculum should be focusing on these various aspects of a human person, physical, spiritual, intellectual, psychosocial, cultural, and creative dimensions. And you can see this in the curriculum map. You can look at the curricular um, documents of the school, and this can be something that you can measure. So with this example, now this is just an example because I'm not here to explain and to present to you all the, all the domains, all the standards and the benchmarks. Um, it's just for you to appreciate our PCSS. So the PCSS will give you standards. These are our ideal. But hey, we will just, we will just leave you hanging how to achieve this ideal. We are to give you also in PCSS benchmarks which are concrete ways or they offer concrete indicators on how these ideals in the standards can be achieved. Another example, in the domain of leadership and governance, Standard 7 speaks about an excellent Catholic school develops and empowers its personnel to become professional and morally upright individuals in pursuit of the vision, mission, and goals of the school. So it's also an ideal that our Catholic schools are developing and empowering its personnel to become professional and morally upright individuals. How shall we be able to measure our attainment of this ideal? Then our benchmarks will help us. An example of a benchmark under Standard 7 is this. The school's policies and code of ethics for its personnel uphold personal integrity rooted in Christian morality and discipleship. So it speaks now about policies and code of ethics. When you speak about policies, mababasa yan, mahawakan ang mga dokumento na yan. Yung code of ethics, ganyan din, nakasulat yan. At yan ay may evaluate. Ito ba ay natutupad? Ito ba ay napapatupad? So benchmarks give us concrete evidences or like um, with the benchmarks, we are able to know are we coming close or are we already, are we still far from the ideal that the standards present. Now the last example for this, a, an example on the domain Catholic identity and mission. So the standard says, an excellent Catholic school is faithful to the church's preferential option for the poor and demonstrates its fidelity through actions that favor the deprived sectors of society. Wow! Big words. Preferential option for the poor and actions that favor the deprived sectors of society. How shall we know that our schools are coming close to attain this standard? Then it's now the benchmarks who will help us. Say, there are several benchmarks for one standard. And benchmark 4.2 under the standard 4 on the preferential option for the poor speaks. The, schools, the school allocates human and financial resources to make education equitably accessible to the poor. Yan. 
kung meron kang scholarship officer, kung meron kang social worker, na talaga nakatutok sa scholarship program o kaya sa mga program that are meant to help our poor brethren, then that's something concrete. Kasi ang ganda-ganda ang sabihin, preferential option for the poor. Actions that favor our deprived sectors in society. Pero, how will we know that we are getting to this direction? Aba, tingnan mo ang budget, tingnan mo ang program, at may tao ba sa program na yan. So, what are we presenting here practically is um, an appreciation why the Philippine Catholic School Standards is not just a list of standards, the ideals, they're also benchmarks. So, for example, it's like a tripod or some standards have more than three benchmarks. Parang may mga legs, no? So, if this is the ideal, so paano nyo maabot yung ideal na yan? So, there are several legs or several pillars that an ideal is standing on. And these legs or pillars are more concrete, more measurable, more experienced. So that we know we are getting close to the standard or we're still far away from it. Kasi alam nyo, itong Philippine Catholic School Standards, ito yung sagot doon sa tanong na, kasi in the past three episodes, we're talking about the vision of Catholic education. Tapos sabihin, Father, ang ganda-ganda ng mga pangarap na yan ng ating simbahan, ng ating Santo Papa, tungkol sa katolikong edukasyon. Pero paano tayo makarating dyan? Bay, oo nga. Paano tayo makarating dito? At ito ang tulong sa atin ng Philippine Catholic School Standards. So the PCSS has spelled the standards and the benchmarks that we should try to attain. And these are drafted or written in very concrete terms. Mamaya, mas makikita nyo pa sa rubrics. Talagang hindi na tayo makakalusot. Alam natin, malayo tayo o malapit tayo sa pinapangarap natin. Pero hindi doon nagtatapos ang lahat. Because once we're done evaluating ourselves, whether we're far or near the ideal, then we have to come up with our courses of action, yung school improvement plan. Dapat meron tayong gagawin para higit na mapalapit sa ideal na ating pinapangarap para sa ating mga sarili. And what will help us, what will really help us evaluate or assess ourselves, where are we in the attainment of these standards and benchmarks? Ito yung rubrics. So rubrics are descriptors of the various levels of adherence to the benchmark. And there are four levels in rubrics, in our rubrics. So, ang ating goal, sana tayo level 3, fully meeting the benchmark. Pero bakit hindi tayo mangarap ng level 4? Level 4 is exceeding the benchmark. But maybe, kasi hindi naman talaga tayo ganong kalinaw pa sa ating mga pangarap, at ngayon pa lang tayo nagsisimula, maybe, or don't be disheartened, if we are level 2, partially meeting the benchmarks. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong kaunti, pero kulang pa. Or, initially meeting the benchmark. Ang dami-dami pang kailangan gawin, but at least, ba alam na natin na meron pala tayong kailangan gawin. Knowledge of the enemy is half the battle won. Ang hirap kasi nung nanghuhula eh, ano ba ang dapat natin gawin sa ating mga katolikong paaralan para tayo talaga ay maging mga katolikong paaralan. Now, with the PCSS, and this is a self-assessment tool, not somebody from outside will come to us and evaluate us. No, tayo ang mag evaluate sa ating mga sarili, and from there we'll know, layo pa natin, o malapit na, o naroon na, o nalampasan na natin ang mga ideal na ating pinapangarap para sa ating mga sarili. Well, I don't know if it's clear and if you can read it in your screens, but this is an example of the rubric. So, tingnan lang natin, no? if you cannot read it in your screen, I just read it for you. Yung level 3, meeting the benchmark. So, we're talking here of benchmark 1.1 that says the philosophy, vision, mission, statements, and core values are centered on Jesus Christ, rooted in gospel values, and aligned with church teachings and practices. So that's our target. No? It's already 
concrete kasi benchmark na. We're talking here about philosophy, vision, mission statement, and core values. Hindi yan nakalutang. Nakasulat yan sa ating mga admin manual. Nakapost yan sa mga dingding natin. Yung ating philosophy, vision, mission, pati yung ating mga core values. So meeting the benchmark, the PVMSCV identify Jesus Christ as the center of the school's identity and the importance of having a personal relationship with Him. O, ang ganda na lang muna. Level 4, ibig sabihin, mas mataas sa meeting the benchmark, no? Exceeding the benchmark, the PVMSCV identify Jesus Christ as the center of the school's identity and the importance of having a personal relationship with Him, pareho lang, ng level 3, pero may dagdag, and responding to His call. So, in level 3, we are contented that Jesus Christ is at the center of our vision and mission, of our identity as a school, and we appreciate that it is important to develop a personal relationship with Him. But in level 4, the entire community does not only know that Jesus Christ is important for them, but they also respond to Him concretely in terms of say, many things no? in their lives. Level 2, partially meeting the benchmark, the PBMSCV mentioned Jesus Christ but without reference to His centrality in the school's identity. So did you say Jesus Christ is important but He is not central? And level 1, initially meets benchmark, there is a philosophy, vision, mission, schools and statements, core values, but Jesus Christ was not even mentioned or not even referred as the center of the school's identity. So when you look at the rubrics from 3 going up to 4, or from 3 going down to 2 or 1, meron yang differences. Merong scaling up and merong scaling down. So this makes the Philippine Catholic School Standards more valuable and more useful to our schools. Kasi yung iba mga survey, di ba? Jesus Christ is the center of our school's identity and mission. Oh, Always, frequent, sometimes, never. 4, 3, 2, 1. Tapos, how do you define always? How do you find sometimes or frequent? Or how do you find yes, maybe, no? But in the PCSS, ayan ang pinaghirapan ng PCSS, they really describe what is meeting the benchmark, what is partially meeting or initially meeting, and what is exceeding the benchmark. And the last part of the PCSS is the list of possible evidences. Evidences are very important because you will assess your school not just from what you think of. Kamusta na ba kami bilang eskwelahan? Is Jesus Christ really the center of our philosophy, vision, mission statements, and core values? Hindi po. Hindi pwedeng isipin mo lang at imaginein mo na yes, 4, 3, 2, 1. No. You have to look for evidences. Kailang umigot ka sa skwelahan and there must be evidences. So PCS is evidence-based. So you look at your prospectus, your immersion programs, your policies, etc. about the philosophy, vision, mission, and the core values of the school. No? So... Well, these are very briefly, no? Um, you can write CAP if you want an orientation on the Philippine Catholic School Standards. And I think the, these documents are available at the CAP website. And um, very briefly lang, ha, mabilis lang, the coverage of PCSS. Para alam niyo ano ba mga pinag-uusapan dito? And I'll just talk about the standards, no? no longer with the benchmarks. Well, kung mabilis na mata ninyo, mababasa ninyo lahat yan. So, the standard one, it talks about the philosophy, vision, mission, and core values of the school. Dapat central to Jesus Christ. We adhere as a community to this vision and mission. Gospel values are promoted and we are in unity with the pastoral direction of our local church. The second standard speaks about the school community and the civilization of love. It speaks about faith formation, Catholic environment, our relationship with other religions. So look, 
hindi tayo, tayo-tayo lang ha. There's also part of our identity that we reach out to Protestants, to non-Catholics, and to other cultures. How do we promote peace, justice, and charity? And how does our school integrate culture, faith, and life? The third standard speaks about the mission of evangelization. Are we collaborating with our local church in addressing local issues? And what strategies and technologies do we use in bringing about Christian formation of our students, of our community members, our stakeholders, and the rest of the community? Do we collaborate with the families and our lay people? So, kita ninyo, ang Catholic school, hindi siya isang institusyon na andyan sa sabi ng simbahan at hanggang doon lang. Napakalawak ng ating mga uh, kailangang saklawin no? para ma-achieve o maabot natin ang ating pangarap. The fourth standard, na bagit ko na kanina, preferential option for the poor. And PCSS, well, not really demands but encourages us to have sustainable programs for the poor make our Catholic education accessible and hindi passive recipients ang mga mahihirap ng ating mga programa. That our, our poor are active participants in the educative process. So those are the four standards under the domain Catholic identity and mission. For leadership and governance, I think we have three. The fifth standard is about our school leaders. Are they servant leaders after the example of Jesus Christ? What are their personal and professional qualities? Are they witnessing Catholics? Are they recognized by the competent authority of the church? And what do they go through so that they can continuously form themselves as Catholic school leaders? Now, the next standard is about governance and administration. How do our leaders lead, manage, and administer our schools? Do they observe Christian principles? Are they leading the schools in the spirit of collegiality, co-responsibility, and subsidiarity? I mean, the spirit of communio, and now the spirit of synodality. And are we complying with the prescriptions of DepEd, the government agencies in charge of education, without compromising gospel values and church's teachings. Now, the last standard for leadership and governance, how do our leaders develop and empower the school personnel? Is their formation program integral? Does or do our personnel develop a deep sense of ownership and responsibility and accountability for the school and what are the policies and code of ethics that we observe for our school personnel. Now, the third domain is learner development. So the first um, standard is on curriculum. The curriculum is intended for integral formation of the human person. Is there an alignment of the curriculum with our philosophy vision, mission, and core values? Are the curricular objectives and integral, are, and integral formation clearly articulated in the curriculum? And um, do we promote engagement of learners so that they can discern and integrate gospel values no, as they go through their learning experiences? The next standard, oh no, this is also a continuation of the standard, are our curricular programs and uh, um, is there an integration of moral and religious formation in our curricular programs? Do we integrate also Filipino culture in our religious education? Do we adhere to national standards, international benchmarks, and 21st century education? Kaya magandang turo sa Catholic school. Hindi lang tayo basta nagtuturo. No? We are aspiring to really achieve the highest possible standards in terms of academics. And does ICT, Information and Communication Technology, support our instruction? So the next standard speaks about instruction. 
the teaching and learning experiences. Are our teachers competent? Do they go through continuous formation? Do they develop 21st century literacy in the learning experiences? And do our teachers respect the dignity, diversity, and needs of learners? And then the third standard for learner development is on assessment. And assessment it's just simply giving tests and scoring the test sheets and giving grades to our students. Our assessments should be standards-based. Malilaw. Ano yung dapat na matutunan? Do we have results-based monitoring and evaluation system? Do we use assessment results to improve our teaching learning experiences? And how do we monitor our curriculum and the quality of our instruction? For the fourth domain, the learning environment, the 11th standard speaks about school climate and environment. Do we celebrate Catholic school, Catholic rituals, devotions, customs, and traditions? Are there Christian signs and symbols around the school, and are they effective? Do we provide space and time for our teachers, students, and stakeholders to experience God? Are our school facilities safe, functional, and adequate? Are there opportunities to continue learning outside the classroom? Do we promote vocations? Now, the 12th standard, do we have a community of life-giving collaborators? Are our personal and stakeholders model professional competence and Christian service? Are our stakeholders supportive of our curriculum goals? And do we recognize our learners' achievements? Thirteenth standard, are there opportunities to encounter in our school different cultures and beliefs? Do we recognize the dignity of learners? Are there interfaith and ecumenical activities in our Catholic schools? Do we celebrate unity and diversity? Is there a code of conduct for learners to accept and affirm the uniqueness of individuals? And the last domain is operational vitality. And it speaks about first, standard 14, the management of our resources. It speaks about strategic planning, human resources management, school finances, management of material and physical resources, management of enrollment, school communications, and quality assurance. And the last standard is about linkages and networking. Do we organize and form our stakeholders, the alumni, the parents, the benefactors, even our parish leaders who are supporting the school? And do we collaborate with other institutions who share the same um, goals in terms of education formation, uh, like total human development and social transformation? So practically, this um, slide speaks or tells us the entire PCSS. So there are eight defining characteristics, five domains, 15 standards, 62 benchmarks, and 62 rubrics with four levels in each rubric clearly defined and the possible evidences that the school can use for its self-assessment. In 2014, medyo luma na, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, we have um, evaluated the PCSS by asking our Catholic educators in the entire Philippines on how they look at it. So there were 1,678 respondents in the 2014 CAP Regional Assemblies. When we asked the question, the highest score is four, are the defining characteristics representing ideals of excellent Catholic schools? The respondents strongly agreed with a score of 3.79. Are the standards realistic and achievable? The respondents strongly agreed with a score of 3.71. Are the standards and benchmarks representative of, represent, do they represent ideals of excellent Catholic schools? Again, the respondents said they strongly agree with a score of 3.7. Is a document, will the document enhance the Catholic identity of the school? The respondents said again, they strongly agree with a score of 3.76. Will the document guide school improvement? Yes, everybody agreed again, strongly with a score of 3.78.
Now, going to the last part of our presentation, what are the phases of PCSS implementation? So if you want to implement PCSS, you follow four phases. The first one, you organize the school, and then you be oriented about the PCSS as a quality, internal quality assurance program. Then using PCSS, you will do self-assessment. You check and evaluate yourself where you are in relation to the standards and benchmarks. Then from the, from the results of the self-assessment, you will do your school improvement planning. And finally, once you have a school improvement plan, you will implement the plan, monitor it, and evaluate it again using the PCSS standards and benchmarks. Okay? While it looks very simple, it is not that simple because um, it is simply answering a survey, one, two, three, four, no? As I've said earlier, you have to look for evidences that will justify your score in the rubrics, and you should also be creative and critical enough to think of ways so that the benchmarks and standards will be achieved from where you are based on your self-assessment. Now, what is the value of um, PCSS? Its basic use is um, for school improvement planning. So every year we have um, plans for our schools, but where are those plans founded? A gusto ng director, gusto ng principal, personal, nakita sa, sa kapitbahay na school, narinig sa seminar. Those are good, no? wala tayong problema doon. Pero minsan pabago-bago, pa iba iba So sa PCSS, this is a clear set of benchmarks and standards that will help us ito papunta, ito ang daan so that we can really become true to our Catholic identity and mission. Now, for those schools who are certified under the PAC, ESC program, that is Private Education Assistance Committee, um, Education Service Contracting Program, so these schools go through certification or for those schools who go through accreditation, the PCSS will be an added value for you. In fact, a number of our schools already integrate or merge um, the PCSS standards and benchmarks and the standards and benchmarks of our certification and accreditation instruments. PCSS, I have learned, already help a number of schools go through their Christian formation program because they find themselves weak in this area. So they, um, what you call this, they... Um, they, they develop programs, Christian formation programs, so that everybody in the school community will be able to achieve the standards. PCSS can also help you in your ongoing professional development of school personnel. Well, for many, and we've been receiving requests um, permission for permission, they use PCSS for their research and graduate studies. But the ultimate value of PCSS is for personal, institutional, and societal transformation okay so I think this is the last slide that we have for the PCSS presentation so this captures the entire PCSS program so at the top that is our goal a Philippines renewed and world transformed that is the vision of the Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines now as far as the church is concerned we are looking for new evangelization a new way of being church. So, dyan tayo papunta. So, there is an institutional transformation. There's also a personal transformation. Then, there's also the societal and ecclesial renewal or transformation. Now, where do we begin? We begin with a Catholic school, institutional, and we also begin with our person. Kasi hindi man pwede magbago ang school nang hindi nagbabago ang bawat isang tao na bahagi ng paaralan. So, PCSS is a way, PCSS is our way from where we are now to the transformation or renewal that we want to see and experience in our schools, in our personal lives, in the church, and in the society. Because PCSS is, if you will look at it, sana you will be inspired to really study and have a copy of PCSS and, and, and embrace it for your school, this will help our schools become agents of evangelization, conversion, and ultimately, holiness. No? And um, why? Because PCSS is a tool. 
It will help you for self-assessment. It is a roadmap or blueprint. It will help you guide. It will guide you where to go. It is also standard. It tells you, you have to achieve this ideal. This is our mission. It becomes our personal responsibility that our schools embrace its Catholic identity and mission. And this is our vision for ourselves, for our schools and society, that we are all animated by Jesus' teachings no? in the gospel and through the church's proclamation. And we take Hebrews 12, chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, as a guiding, say, scriptural verse. Let us run. Kaya, you know, tumatakbo yung tao dyan, papunta, using PCSS. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Kailangan po pagtsatsaga. Hindi po ito madali, hindi po ito sa upuan, hindi nga po ito isang buwan o isang taon lang. Our, our journey to renew ourselves may be never ending, pero pinakamahalaga. Lagi nating pinapanibago ang ating mga sarili. And with that, maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Father, sa napaka mabilis na pagpapaliwanag ng isang napaka parang malawak na PCSS na topic. At uh, dahil po dyan, Father, meron pa rin po tayong mga uh, natatanggap na mga messages galing sa ating mga Viewers, una na po, galing kay Antonio Condes. Good afternoon uh, from Baguio City. Uh, si Au Del Rosario from St. Louis University of Baguio City din po. Magandang hapon po. Si uh, Mary Jean Indino Ibanez, joining from Assumption College of Nabunturan. Uh, meron din pong uh, question, galing naman po kay Nida de Tablan. Do we encourage parents particip- Do we encourage parents participation on the education of their children considering that they are the first educators of their children? Yeah, in fact, um last time we mentioned that um Pope Francis in the Global Compact on Education is one of the priorities or commitments that all schools are asked to embrace that the family become the first place of um education and formation. Thank you, Father. Meron pong message mula kay Lorenza Tabugadir. Good afternoon po from Colegio de Santa Rita Foundation Incorporated del, del Gallego Camsur. Uh, kay Will Hill Mina Romano. Good afternoon po from NDMU Ibed City of Coronadal. Si Emian And- Andoki. Andoke. Good afternoon, watching po from Pilar High School, Bukidnon. Si MN, we also hope we also hope Catholic schools provide programs for lay Catholics to learn their faith deeper. At uh, follow up po ni MN, uh, Father, I hope Catholic schools will be Catholic again. We have noticed a lot of Catholic schools promoting LGBT ideology uh, it's one thing to say promoting LGBT ideology and it's another thing to say respecting the gender preferences of our LGBT uh, people or community this is one thing that is very sensitive how can you be um, because in the global compact on education the first commitment is to focus on the primacy of the human person and part of the human person and part not just the totality bahagi is our gender preferences how can we even pcss um, promote um, respect for the uniqueness and the diversity of people so how can we promote uniqueness which at the same time will not be um, say promoting an ideology that may, may, no, I'm not passing judgment, may be inconsistent with the church's teachings and the gospel values. Kaya magkaiba yung pagtanggap at pagkilala sa mga LGBT at hindi lang sa kanila, sa lahat ng mga tao sa paaralan na may iba't ibang mga pinaniniwalaan at iba naman, iba naman din yung pagsusulong ng mga ideolohiya na mga na, na, na pinopropose ng iba't ibang mga grupo na tao na to. 
Maraming salamat, Father. Nasa dulo na po tayo, kaya lang babasahin ko pa rin po yung ilang mga pagbati galing kay Joanne. May Lee, rainy afternoon to all. God bless Father Alain in your mission in the Catholic Church. Question po, last siguro to Father, si Senon Arago. Nung pinagsama po namin ang PCSS at PEAC's standards, bakit daw po yun ang ginagamit namin samantalang PEAC ang nag-check? Isn't it conflicting? Um, ginawa ko din naman yun na pagsamahin. Pero dahil po ang nag-check ay ang PEAC or ESC, dapat talaga you will present or organize your evidences, your school and your ratings using the PEAC. And the PCSS, hindi lang siya taga-support, taga-enrich siya ng inyong school's performance for the PEAC or ESC. Kasi huwag natin ipipilit sa PEAC that we shall follow PCSS kasi pwede naman talaga silang emerge. No? Siyempre, <laughs> hindi sila matutuwa kasi they are from PEAC, then you follow their standards. And from our experience, if you will use the PAC standards, ima-match natin yung ESC. Ay, ima-match natin yung PCSS. At ma-match naman, and I hope you experience, mas mataas or mas marami ang demands ng PCSS. In fact, we have some benchmark standards that are not demanded by the PAC. Kaya, mas mataas ang score na dapat makukuha natin when we do integrate it. When we do integrate them. Sige, Father, bago po ang final message ninyo, mga pagbati pa rin po, Maria Lourdes Lacupanto. Good afternoon, Father, from Veritas Catholic School under Diocese of Paranaque. Very timely and helpful this talk as all schools under DOPPSA is in the phase 2 self-assessment using the PCSS tool. Thank you po. From Judith Ad Aldaba, thank you, Father Alain. Good afternoon. Si Mary Jean Ibanez, thank you so much, Father Alain, for inspiring us as with our mission. Benita Abuan, thank you po, Father, for the comprehensive sharing on the PCSS. At dyan po tayo, Father, magtatapos. Kaya hingi na po namin ang inyong paanyaya sa susunod na Miyerkules at ang inyo pong pagbabasbas. Well, thank you for joining with us in this um, five Wednesday episode of um, the Catholic Schools and the Church. I hope by this time you see that the way to achieve our mission still um it's there's still a long way to go walang susuko walang bibitaw at walang magiiwanan next um wednesday um lalakasan ko ang loob to speak about the future of catholic education marami tayong magagandang inaabangan pero marami din tayong mga hamon na kailangang harapin ng may tapang at na may pananampalataya sa Diyos. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.